Uh, welcome back to Quantum Computation Simplified Part 4. So in this video we will be seeing an interesting algorithm with whatever we have learned and this proves that uh, quantum computation is superior to classical computation. So let's go into the algorithm definition. But before that, what is its significance? So it was the first example on the benefit of a quantum algorithm over a classical computation. And it's an algorithm designed for execution on quantum computers and has the potential to be more efficient than classical algorithm by taking advantage of quantum computers properties, the superposition and entanglement. Okay, looks great. Let's see how it works. What it does, first we'll understand. So this algorithm works on a Boolean function. So suppose we are given a, a hidden Boolean function, meaning a black box. We don't know what does it contain. It takes input a string of inputs like 0, 1, 1, 0 like that and returns either 0 or 1 for every input. Okay, so it's expressed like this. Again, to let's try to understand it in a better way. And this Boolean function has got a special property. So what is that property? That it is guaranteed to be either be balanced or constant. So what is a constant function? A constant function returns all zeros or all ones for any given input. I mean, whatever the string we have, it will give every time zero or every time one. While a balanced function returns zeros for half of in, uh, all inputs and one for remaining half. Is that clear? So maybe with a number we will try to understand. Suppose we are give, I mean, we give the input like 0, 1, 1, 0 to the function. It may return all ones or all zeros. Then it's called a constant function. Instead, if it returns like this, that means twice zeros and twice one, then it's a balanced function. Now, our job here is to find out the given hidden Boolean function is a constant or balanced one. So we need to find out. So how do we find out? First, let's look at the conventional way. What do we do? We give the string, look at the result, and then decide whether it's a constant or balanced. But how many times you have to make the query? Or how many times you will invoke the function? Minimum two you have to do it, right? Suppose first time we get zero, and second time we got one, we are very lucky. that with minimum two queries we are able to find out whether the function is constant or balanced. Instead, if our luck is not good, let's take, um, let us assume that we are given 10 uh, bits. First five times, I um, mean in five inputs it gave zero and then at the sixth instant it gave one. So what does it mean? At the sixth instant, uh, after making six times the uh, query, we were able to decide that, I mean not decide, we were able to uh, confirm that the given function is a balanced one. So how did we get six? Half of 10 plus one. Suppose we are given n uh, bits, so you have to make two power n minus one plus one queries. Is that clear? This is half plus one. So then only you get the probability of success equal to 1 in a classical approach. Now if I make one query in a quantum approach and I get the right answer, will it not be wonderful? So that is the magic. Let us understand the Deutsch Joshua algorithm, how the magic is done here. So let's start uh, with the uh, n number of qubits all in zero state okay so and then uh, that is in one register i would say and that the register is called input register or data register and we have another register in which you have only one qubit and that is in one state so this is called ancilla or target so uh, ancilla it comes like a substitute and use it for some time and then afterwards you don't care about that 
So that's a special terminology we use. And then we apply Hadamard gate for all the qubits. After, then we call that as a station 1. So station 0 is the initial state of the qubits. Then we apply some gates. So here we get the station 1. Then we apply something called oracle. So what is oracle? So it's again a black box that contains uh, a lot of uh, operations. And then uh, it, it, it does something special. So it takes x and y here and then uh, gives out x and y sum modulo f of x. Anyway, we'll see more details in the subsequent slides. And the output of oracle is station 2. Then we apply again Hadamard gates on uh, this uh, set of qubits. And then you get at this place, the, at station 3, we make the measurement and decide on the result. Okay, now let's start. So at station 0, the state of all qubits is given in the expression like this. So this is a new expression, but you don't have to worry. It says that I have n qubits in state 0, that's all. Okay, so which anyway, that's what we want to uh, start with. So no confusion, we leave it like this. This is just an expression. So then we need to apply Hadamard gate. So after applying Hadamard gate, the result at this point, station 1, the state of all qubits is given like this. So this we are familiar. That is for one state 1, we know very well that Hadamard will give this kind of result. But what happened to the n qubits which, are, uh, which were in uh, state 0? So that is given by this expression. How did we get this expression? Let's have a look at it on this side. So typically we know that Hadamard applied on state 0 is this one and state 1 is this one. So that this is the one we are having it here for this one. And if we apply Hadamard gates on two qubits at state 0, what we have to do it? We have to do it twice. 0, 1 into 0 plus 1. Right? 0 plus 1 into 0 plus 1 and 1 by square root 2 will become half and if you multiply further if you simplify 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 this we have seen this right earlier and uh, this for 2 qubits case it's okay we have 4 states suppose if it is 3 qubits we will have 8 states and for n qubits oh we have 2 power uh, n states so we don't want to handle such a large expression. Instead, we will say it is x, where x represent all the combinations of the given number of uh, uh, qubits. So in this case, it is twice, I mean two qubits. So we have written like this, x is an element of a set of uh, 0, 1, uh, twice. And this is the state x. And if it is for n qubits, what you have to do is replace uh, 2 with n. So this is nothing but uh, in fact square root of 2 to the power of 2. So right. So that will become uh, 2 to the power of n. And this set uh, value will become n. So this is what we have done. So after applying Hadamard gate at station 1, the state of uh, qubits is given by this equation. Now we will try to apply the magic oracle and see what happens. So this has come from the previous slide, no issue. And after applying this oracle, this is the value we are getting. So this remains same, nothing much. And other, all other things are remaining same except that some scalar value has come into picture. So how did it happen? Let's see, what is the oracle? So we know that oracle does like this. Takes x, y state and then give x and y some modulo f of x state. So we need to apply. So x will not touch. So y state, we know y state. Y state is nothing but 0 minus 1 state. So we have to say 0 some modulo f, f, f of x, 1 some modulo f of x. So 0 sum modulo f of x, we know that it is nothing but f of x itself. The 0 doesn't affect uh, the value, the output. Whereas 1 plus 
one sum modulo f of x we don't know what is the outcome because it depends on the f of x value if it is 0 then it becomes 1 if it is 1 then it becomes 0 so that is what is written here I mean. so for uh, again for psi 2 can be expressed as f of x minus 1 sum modulo f of x so and now let us understand what happens if f of x is 0 or 1 if f of x is 0 what happens so this will become 0 and 1 sum modulo 0 is nothing but 1 so we have got 0 minus 1 by square root of 2 if f of x is 1 what happens so f of x is 1 so we have put 1 and here this will become 1 sum modulo 1 which is nothing but 0 we have seen it earlier so interesting things are there here so if f of x is 0 this is uh, I mean this expression is 0 minus 1 and if it is 1 it is 1 minus 0 can you write it in a better way in simple term so that is what has been done here minus 1 to the power of f of x I mean these guys are great so which says states that if f of x is 0 it will be like this if it is f of x 1 then the signs get interchanged very good okay now we'll move to station 3 and how do we reach station 3 by applying Hadamard gate again n number of times so state 2 it has come from the previous slide no nothing to worry state station 3 what has happened so you will see something here nothing much decided uh, something has happened extra and then uh, you have some additional terms coming into picture so let's see how we got again because we are going to apply Hadamard but this time we will have express Hadamard gate in a slightly different way we know always whether you apply Hadamard on 0 or 1 the first term doesn't get changed only the second term it will become plus or minus depending on whether x is 0 or 1 so that is what it is written like this if it is 0 then it is plus if it is 1 it will become minus so why did we do that it has got some advantages we'll uh, look at that so this can be simplified now like this if Adamard is applied on x instead of writing two terms I'm going to write it in a single term right with the sigma in it so let's say uh, x is 0 at that time what happens so first this will uh, leave it for the time being so I'll put uh, uh, minus 1 and the z can be 0 or 1 okay so first case we'll take uh, x is 0 z is 0 so x is 0 z is 0 minus 1 to the power of 0 is 1 and uh, z is 0 so this is nothing but 0 state now because of sum we'll put the plus sign now again x is 0 but z is 1 so 1 into 0 0 minus 1 to the power of 0 is 1 so and z is 1 clear and if I if x is 1 you will see minus sign here I mean that you can do it as a homework for you clear so same had a mark gate we are trying to put it in a simple way I mean sorry not in simple way maybe a complicated but very useful way so for two qubits case what happened so this will be doing it twice so it will get added like this x1 z1 plus x2 z2 and then you will be doing twice so that's why this has become a twice okay now what happens if it is n times so I just copied uh, from uh, the previous slide so n times again whenever wherever 2 is there you replace it with n here 1 n here 1 n and this one now uh, what we are doing is uh, instead of uh, writing x1 z1 plus x2 z2 like this up to x n z n you have to enter right instead we will say x z that's all which means uh, nothing but x1 z1 plus x2 z2 
So this expression has become simpler. So that is what has gone into this place here. So now we have got two summation. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, actually we have got an answer already. How? It's not a direct one. So in a conventional way, we pass all the qubits, look at the result, then you say based on the results. Whereas here we are trying to interpret the results in a slightly different way. So please uh, be watchful. So what we are saying is the probability of measuring all qubits at zero state is given by the magnitude of uh, this expression. So you take the magnitude. So for all zeros, so this will go off and you will have 1 by 2 power n sigma minus 1 to the power of f of x magnitude square. Now let's look at uh, the two uh, possibilities. If f is constant, the given boolean function is constant, what happens? We will have 1 or 0. So let us put first case minus 1, 1 to the power of 1 plus minus 1 to the power of 1. Like this, we will keep getting n number of times. So minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. And since we are taking the absolute value, so you will have 2 like this, you will get n number of times. And finally, the net result is you get 1 if f is constant. So we evaluated when f is constant with one value. Same thing will happen when it is 0. So this will become uh, 0, this will become 0. So what you will get? 1. So you will get 1 plus 1 like this n times. So again same you will get 1. That means if if f is constant, I will get all qubits here 0. Let us say what happens if it is balanced. If f is balanced, so what happens? So you will get once 0 and another time 1, which means you will get minus 1 plus 1 and that will get uh, cancelled. You may get and finally you will end up in 0. Clear? So this will happen minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 like that. It will keep happening and at the end of the day you will get 0. The value for this expression if f is balanced. So at that time what happens? So the probability of getting all zeros at this location is 0 which means you will get all 1s. So if I measure all ones here, I know the given function is balanced. So that is what again, I mean, uh, we will uh, prove it in a quantum computer or simulator. But before that, uh, we will thank uh, DJ that with one pass, they are able to determine the given function is a constant or balanced. There are a lot of uh, magical things happened. Possibly you will understand uh, more if you I mean, try to do each and every operation in, in more uh, detailed way. So uh, we are going to program this in a quantum computer. At that time we need to have one function, right? So I will uh, use a balanced function because a constant function you don't have to really worry because we know very well that uh, if it is zero, you apply twice Hadamard, you will get zero. So we'll apply, I mean, we'll develop a balanced function. So how do we develop a balanced function? So by having two controlled NOT gates, we can have a balanced function. So what does it do? Based on the two inputs, so this is the target bit. Okay, target bit should be always one. So it takes 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and it gives 0, 0, 1. Now, if I make this as 1, then it will become 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and gives 1, 0, 0. 
because it gets flipped once, right? And again, if it is 0, 1, 1, you will get 0, 1, 0. And if it is 1, 1, you will get 1, 1, 1, because it gets flipped once here, again it gets flipped. So, if you look at the outputs, you have 2 times zeros and 2 times 1. So, this is a perfect balanced function. So, this function we will use it uh, when we uh, work in a quantum computer. So, the next uh, video, we will be working on a quantum computer and then we will try to summarize whatever we have learned. Okay? Bye.